Hello, and welcome to today's video, where we will be discussing images inside of templates. Specifically, we're talking about adding your company logo to title blocks or other templates, either in one of the existing title blocks already provided by Tecla Structures, or your own title block that you've incorporated into Tecla Structures. We'll have two methods. The first is very basic and beginner friendly, specifying just a file path in the project properties. The second, however, is a bit more advanced using some of our advanced options and mapping to the firm folder. The first is a repeatable uh, per model process, and the second one is something more permanent where you, once you set it up, it'll be available to you every time you create a new model. So with that, let's go ahead and begin. Okay, so we have an existing drawing here, a masonry one. We're using a standard title block with that comes uh, out of the box with Tecla Structures. If you're using your own or would like to use your own title block as opposed to one of ours, use the QR code shown on screen for an excellent instructive video on how to bring that into the template editor for use in your drawings. But we're going to focus on what comes with just the software installation today. We're going to be taking that Tecla Structures logo that you see here on screen and we're going to be replacing it with our own company logo. So the first thing that we need to do in order to do that is actually exit out of our drawing so we can get to our project properties. And once we're back in the model, let's go up to the file menu and then down to project properties. A lot of the information in title blocks can be populated right through this pane. So the name of your project, the builder, the location, and that sort of thing can be all be populated here. But if we go down to the user defined attributes, we can actually add additional information too, specifically about our company, which you can see here on the company information tab. In addition to that, down at the bottom, we actually have the ability to choose several different styles of title blocks. So if you want to use one of the alternative styles that we provide, you can actually set this before you create your drawings, and it's going to use that style. Um, if we go ahead and just take a peek at some of these, there's about six to choose from. They all look slightly different, but they're all horizontal lower uh, right-hand corner styles, all using that Tecla Structures uh, logo, right? But actually, in the field above, it has a field for a company logo. And we can actually paste the file path of our company logo into that field, and then it will show up in the title block once we open the drawing again. Now, keep in mind, this has to be done for every model. It's not something that you can save in the template or in your firm folder and it's going to repeat every time. So this is a manual process per model, but it's a quick and easy way to get your logo in there. Now, if we go to our firm folder, which I have here on my desktop for ease of use, uh, yours might be more on a, a networked location, we can bring this up and I'm just going to go ahead and create a, a subfolder to store our logo. Uh, we'll just call it, I think, logos. There we go. And I have my company image over here, and I'm just going to take a peek. It's just a nice little cement truck. We'll just use that as an example. Um, and we're going to need to place that into our logo subfolder that we just created. So we'll grab that and bring it in. There we are. So now let's open up that logo folder, and let's make sure that we're going to get the full file path from the address bar up at the top, including the file name. So I'm going to copy that now before getting my file path. So we'll click in there, make sure we're highlighting the whole file path, including the file name. And let's go ahead and copy that, hitting Control C or right clicking and hitting copy. Now let's come back to Tecla Structures, paste into that field, apply and then modify our settings, and then hit OK. And we can go back to our document manager and reopen our drawing. And once the drawing actually loads, you can see down here in the bottom that the image has been updated. So it's a very quick, easy, and accessible way to change your company logo using our existing title blocks. We did this with us new users in mind to make things really easy when you're first getting going and onboarding and worried more about your first project than all the little settings that you might need to or want to adjust. So I hope this paints some clarity on how you can do this rather quickly. But next, let's go ahead and jump into a slightly more um, advanced option to set your company logo on a more permanent basis. 
So the second method for putting images into templates such as title blocks or legends is a little bit more advanced than what we just uh, shown in the previous example. And it requires you to have some knowledge of firm folders and some light administration with Tecla structures. The first thing that we need is that you must have a firm folder already established. Uh, if you don't, I'll provide links in the description uh, on how to set one up. But essentially, we want that network location where we're storing some different bits of information in company settings. For this video, what we have in place already is a few things. We have our firm folder. Our user INI file, which you'll see on screen here in just a few moments, is already mapped and is pulling resources correctly. So we've already, we're already set there. In addition to that, um, we are pointing our template directory to this template subfolder, um, and it does have a copy of our title block. Now, depending on the title block you want an added image to, if it's one out of the box, you can save a copy here. Or if you've created your own company-specific title block, this is where you're going to want to be storing it. It's important to know this location. Lastly, in the firm folder, what you'll need to do first is add a subfolder for bitmaps. Oh, it could be images, whatever it is. Um, but I used bitmaps as the name of the folder. And inside, this is where I'm placing my company logo, which we'll be using as our example to replace in the title block. I have two versions, one horizontal and one vertical. This way, depending on the orientation of the title block, I am, I am flexible in the way of, of the image being in the correct orientation, as there is not a way to rotate that image inside the template editor, as you will see. So make sure that you are prepared to have your image in the correct orientation. So once we have um, our images in the firm folder and we know the location of that bitmap folder, we can proceed to update our user INI to point to the correct file path to read this. So let's go ahead and go to Tecla Structures. And we're going to go to our advanced options via the file menu, settings, and then advanced options, or you can hit control E on your keyboard for the shortcut. Now, the file path, the advanced option we need to set and add the file path for that bitmap folder is dxk underscore symbol path. However, that doesn't show up here in our advanced options. So what we need to do is be able to set it through our user INI file. So the thing that uh, points Tecla to the right location every time we start it up. And the easiest way to kind of get that information is we must write these options to file. And if we hit this write to file button down at the bottom, it's going to pop up. Again, we're looking for DXK symbol path. You can see it right here. Um, what we want is to copy this entire file path here. Do not grab system in brackets. You can leave that out, but everything else, go ahead and then right highlight and then copy. We can minimize or close that. And next we're going to use the directory browser to find our user INI file. Now, if you're using the US Imperial environment uh, for cast in place or masonry, under the manage ribbon, there'll be a button for the directory browser, which brings it right up here on screen. If you don't have that available, no, do not worry. You can simply go to the applications and components side pane and start typing directory browser, which can also access it from there. Specifically, we're going to be looking at the user settings, the user INI file. If we open this up, it'll bring up the file in your text editor. I'm using Notepad++, but if you're opening up in standard Notepad, this may look slightly different. Um, as you can see here, we can set our firm folder, which has already been established, as well as our template directory. And those match those file paths in the example firm folder that I showed you from my desktop. Now, we need to add uh, the file path to the DXK symbol path. Now, my user INI has this uh, populated already, but if it doesn't, that's no big deal. You can just come to the bottom and paste in what you had. The important thing to do is make sure that you type the word set and a space before DXK symbol path. Um, or you can paste it here where there's one already existing and then just make sure that you delete the existing name of the file path. You'll notice anything after the equal sign is going to be in is, is the file paths. And what we need to do now is actually add another path. Each of these file paths are separated by a semicolon. So once we've pasted and have it set to set space DXK underscore symbol path, and then what we've pasted, we can add a semicolon at the end of that. The next step is to go back to our firm folder and navigate 
to our bitmaps and then come to the file path here and copy this. Don't use shortcut paths or anything like that. Come to the actual location and get the full uh, local address. Let's go back to our notepad and we're going to paste that file path in there. And then we're going to hit the save or file and then save. And then we can close. At this point, once we've done that, we need to come and save our model and restart Techless Structures. So we can save, file, and exit. Now once Tecla has fully reopened and you're back in your model, we can proceed to the next steps. The easiest way to start updating a title block or other template that's in a drawing um, with your company logo is to actually create one first. Now if I go to my drawings and reports, I've already created a drawing in advance here, but you're more than welcome to get a view established right click, hit create journal arrangement drawing, load your appropriate settings that use the title block you wish to update, and then create that drawing. Either way, once you have the drawing created, you wanna have it open. Now, for this particular example, we're using a vertical um, title block for a D size. This will work on any title block or other template that is graphical. And in, in nature and in the template editor, if you're familiar, there are two types. And graphical, it must be, uh, is a requirement here. And all title blocks are. So um, the easiest way to go about this is to select it, or double click, I should say, on the title block itself. And we'll be presented with some options. And we're going to open this up in the template editor. Now, as we said at the beginning, you want to make sure that you're using a, a title block that is um, not from your C system install, but from your firm folder. And you can confirm that up at the top with the file path. If this is from the firm, uh, from your installation on your C drive, you can quickly do a file save as, and then navigate to your template file in your firm folder and just save it there. If you save it with the same name, Tecla will use this one first and not the one on your C drive. Uh, and this will also be accessible to any users pointing to the same firm folder. So next, what we need to do is make sure that we have added that bitmap file path to the template editor as well. So if we go to the options and then preferences, we can go to the file locations tab. And at the end, I've already done it in advance here, but you can see I've added a semicolon and then see users, my name, desktop, or the appropriate firm folder path, including the bitmaps or images subfolder. Okay, this is very important. You want to hit OK. If you're just setting this now, you'll probably want to close the template editor and reopen it. But now, inside of a row, we can come in and insert a new image or update an existing one. Um, typically speaking, when you look at an image inside the template editor, the picture properties are pretty straightforward. It, you can select the file and it's going to bring you there um, to update. We can go ahead and choose our vertical or horizontal logo hit apply, and that's going to adjust. Now, if you're using the same resolution as a previous picture, this may not work out quite well. So if you wanna insert a brand new picture, you can always delete that one. Come up to the toolbar here and insert a picture. We'll go to our folder location and then uh, select the appropriate image. I'm gonna go ahead and just come out like that. And you can see here, I'm a little big, so we'll go ahead and adjust that and center. All we need to do now is go ahead and save. Typically, when you don't have these file paths set correctly, where this starts to go wrong is you don't find the file path to even pull the image from, or if you do, it shows up as blank, or you get an error message from the template editor saying you can't find this picture, right? So now that is, um, but you can see here, we have our, our image visible to us, and we can close the template editor. And it's simply a matter of coming back to our drawing, and refreshing the template. And there we have model plan poor incorporated. It's a simple example. You can replace any image or add images to uh, any template via this method. It does take a little more setup than our first example, which is through just the project properties, but this is a more permanent solution. One really important thing to note is that all users on your team must have their user INI file pointing to the same file paths that you do. That means the firm folder, the template directory, and the DXK symbol path. 
So make sure every user is pointing to those locations inside their user INI so that this works properly for them as well. I hope you found this informative and I hope it helps you along in establishing a permanent company setup. This concludes our video. Thank you for watching. Want to learn more about this topic or how to get started with Techless Structures? Just check out the video's description for links to our user assistance page and user resources guide.